Good afternoon and welcome to Supply Chain Now Radio. We are broadcasting live today from the supply chain capital of the country, Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Scott Luton. I'm your host for today's session. Now, in today's live webinar, we'll once again be gaining insights on procurement best practices. Our guest speaker today is Jonathan Townsley, a leading supply chain consultant and practitioner. More about Jonathan in just a moment. But as always, we're really glad to have you with, with us here today on Supply Chain Now Radio. All right, so let's tackle our ground rules. All attendees will be on mute as we're looking to optimize the audio experience. Now, with that said, let's make it as interactive as possible. So please do submit your questions, your insights, your observations via the chat toolbar, and we'll answer as many questions and share as many of those uh, commentaries as uh, as as my, uh, as often as we have time for at the conclusion of today's webinar. Finally, a PDF of today's presentation and a recording will be available in the next few days to each of our attendees. Okay, so let's take a minute to recognize our sponsors here on Supply Chain Now Radio. Big thanks to our sponsor, Apex Atlanta, which has been serving the Metro Atlanta community since 1964. Apex Atlanta is a nonprofit industry association dedicated to the supply chain management space. You can uh, to learn more, visit us at apexatlanta.org. And a special thanks to our sponsor, TalentStream, a WeBank certified recruiting and staffing firm that specializes in helping organizations find top talent in the engineering, manufacturing, and supply chain space. To learn more, visit us at talentstreamstaffing.com. Okay, so let's introduce our speaker today. You're in for a treat. Uh, Mr. Jonathan Townsley is going to be sharing his perspective with us. Jonathan is a senior level supply chain leader that has spent his career improving the way organizations deliver value for their customers across the globe. He graduated from Webster University with his bachelor's degree, where he majored in international business with a special focus on cultural and language immersion. Jonathan's experience spans both medium and large enterprises and has exposed him to, to diversified industries and emerging technologies. He's very active in the procurement uh, community through membership in the Institute of Supply Management, which is a great organization in ISM, and he always enjoys providing mentorship through the Procurement League. After graduating from Webster, Jonathan began his career as export manager at Ingersoll Rand, a $14 billion diversified manufacturer. He then assumed more progressively encompassing roles as global and strategic sourcing, enterprise e-sourcing manager, and global sourcing director. He also added value at Cooper Busman, Eaton Electrical, where he served as senior global commodity manager. He also later served as Director of Global Sourcing and Supply Chain at Hager Companies. He has championed an enterprise-wide procurement excellence initiative. He's restructured procurement operations, and he's driven improvements in several key metric areas such as quality, delivery, cost, and innovation, especially through supplier collaboration and development. Jonathan has managed and deployed e-sourcing tools and systems and incorporated his project management skills to lead multiple supplier improvement efforts across the Americas, Europe, and Asia. Finally, he's been a leader of procurement change and transformation across organizations, and you're certainly in good hands today. So with all that said, here's Mr. Jonathan Townsley. Scott, thank you so much for uh, that introduction. That really uh, was quite a bit. Uh, uh, really, when it comes down to it, uh, although I've been around uh, a while, yeah, I'm very much a, a learner at heart. I, I really enjoy uh, you know, engaging with people and, and sessions like this. Uh, it really just makes uh, really the, the workday fun because you get to uh, really just see what other people are thinking. I, you know, I certainly have my thoughts and we'll talk about them today, but I, I'm really curious to, to get some more questions and, and see how I can help uh, you know, really uh, advanced procurement and to elevate procurement uh, to drive value for for all of us so uh, just a little bit more about me personally yeah i'm from the the midwest uh, usa specifically st louis so if you're a uh, a hockey fan you're you're very familiar with uh, st louis blues just won the the stanley cup so that was great uh, great for our city great for the region here very happy about that um and also you know just beyond 
the Midwest and the USA, I, I've lived a lot of places, as, as you mentioned. Uh, but my, my family is, is pretty diverse in that you know, my, my mother is third generation Lebanese, father, third generation Serbian. My wife is originally from Moscow and, and Russia. So we like to take all of that, that cultural diversity and cultural uh, mixing. And it's really just a, a part of our, our lives and, and how we, we teach our, our kids to uh, appreciate uh, everything that, that they come into uh, contact with that's really different from uh, what they see every day. So it's it's really interesting for us, and and we like to go to new places and uh, expose the kids to uh, new cultures, uh, new foods. It's it's really a, a lot of fun for us. It's a lot of fun for them. But uh, really, at the end of the day, we're we're just happy to to help people. We're we're very involved in in our neighborhood. Uh, so if, if neighbors need help, you know, we we want to uh, lend them a hand any way that we can. If uh, you know, people with uh, if we work, if they need some help. We're we're just interested in in helping people to grow, and we want to uh, you know, see people happy. Uh, but the, I guess the biggest thing to know about me is that I, I'm just a, a nerd at heart. I, I really love all technology, uh, you know, all things electronic. Uh, I can think every night. My my wife is uh, is pestering me a little bit. Hey, put down the phone. Hey, get away from the computer. Uh, I just, I love it. It's almost like an addiction, but it's real interesting for me anyway, to see how, uh, how technology is, is transforming the, the way people live and the way people work in, in today's world. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and some more about my, my experience. Yeah, I've been in, in the, the supply chain function. And when I say supply chain, I'm really thinking about you know, uh, all elements of it, but particularly in procurement. But I've been in it now for about uh, 20 years, a little bit more than 20 years. So I guess you can say I'm a, I'm a veteran uh, of sorts in, in the function, but it's, it's all been good. Uh, I've learned a lot of things uh, from a lot of different companies and a lot of different people. I've been in the manufacturing sector, as you, you noted, with companies like Ingersoll Rand and Hager, who's a, a door hardware manufacturer. I've been in uh, the electrical side of the manufacturing world with uh, Cooper, who was acquired by Eaton, uh, and uh, most recently really working with uh, you know, smaller companies that uh, you know, have a little bit of a, a different uh, take on things, uh, such as uh, I worked with a, a market out west in the Pacific Northwest, a New Seasons Market. They were very much into uh, sustainability, into <clears throat> uh, uh, local improvements in the community, and that really uh, was very interesting. And, and I've handled all sorts of uh, procurement en engagements when, when you talk about the categories such as uh, direct and, and indirect, uh, things ranging from metal fabricated parts to uh, technology services, uh, IT hardware, uh, contingent labor services, you name it. So throughout my career, I, I've seen quite a bit. But uh, the good thing about the supply chain function is that there's always something to learn. So while I've seen, uh, again, quite a bit, uh, there's always something more just ahead. So it's it's kind of funny. You know, just uh, over the weekend, I was visiting with uh, a friend that I, I hadn't seen in a while. And and she asked me the, the question, you're, you're in, in supply chain, right? Uh, and as far as I know, supply chain, that's, that's logistics, isn't it? And I said, well, you know, um, it, it sort of is. It's, uh, it, it certainly is a big part of the, the supply chain, but it's not exactly what I do. So she said, well, uh, if you're not in logistics, are you in warehousing? I said, well, um, you know, I, I've been a part of teams that are working to make warehousing better, and we've certainly been involved in in adding uh, technology to uh, warehousing operations. But again, that's not really what I'm doing. She's like, ah, I know you buy stuff. Well, now you're getting closer to do what I do. I, I do buy stuff. Uh, being a procurement professional, that that is a lot of what we do. But it it, it goes just beyond that. I would, we're not uh, just buying things like like hardware or or, or desks or services, and, and we're not just uh, negotiating deals to to get better prices. Uh, really, in in today's world, and I'll talk to you about that in, in just a little bit. 
Uh, procurement is, is really uh, uh, much more than that. It, it's certainly an integrated part of the overall supply chain. Uh, and and there, there's really a, a big picture vision uh, that I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about. So when you ask people uh, that are in the, uh, the leading supply chain uh, university communities such as Michigan State, and you ask them what is the, the definition of supply chain management, they will tell you that it's, it's really linking all the, the multiple processes uh, that are in uh, the supply chain function, such as purchasing or sourcing and manufacturing and operations, uh, logistics, warehousing, customer service, those functions, linking them all together to form a competitive advantage. And, and by that, I mean, you know, how are we, we actually getting our services that the, the company provides or products that they make, how are they, are they getting them to the, to the customer uh, to provide that that value to the overall customer. So, uh, again, when you when you read or ask uh, one of the the leading uh, professionals within these uh, university communities, they will tell you again it's it's really uh, gone from the supply chain has gone from uh, sort of a, a back office function to more customer facing, more customer interaction, and it's really connecting uh, everything that that goes along with. Uh, bringing value to those customers, connecting and, and collaborating suppliers, uh, connecting and, and collaborating uh, across functions. Uh, so really, it, it is a it is a, a big uh, and very uh, I would say sometimes complicated uh, mix of things. But uh, I found it to be the, the most enjoyable, and I think this this definition uh, of supply chain is is very uh, appropriate for what we're what we're doing today. Uh, but when we really zero in on, on procurement, my favorite function uh, of the, the, the supply chain community, uh, you, you really look at that definition. And, and what I, I have written here is, is sort of a, a traditional uh, definition. When if you were to go look in the dictionary, what you would find is, is how do we go about uh, obtaining, or maybe it's just the, the act of obtaining whatever it is that you want, whether it be uh, a piece of equipment for your factory, uh, they could be components for a product that you're assembling, or maybe their 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 supplies or services uh, you know, for your organization. So really, when you when you boil it down, uh, the definition of procurement is just the the obtaining of something uh, of value. But uh, when we fast forward or, or bring us forward into 2019 and and business today, your know, procurement really has a, a much broader definition, and I think a a more impactful definition. So you know, for me, if, if someone were to ask me again, what is it that you do? I, I not only uh, buy things, but, you know, really I, I'm looking for ways to partner with suppliers that uh, provide really great performance. And I'm looking for suppliers that want to grow in, in a way that uh, is really uh, beneficial for, for them and, and for me. So, yeah, I'm looking for that, that continuous improvement spirit uh, in the suppliers that I deal with uh, every day. Uh, and secondly, yeah, I think we're really looking to unlock value within the supply base rather than just uh, as we've been known to do in the past is just beat up a supplier. I think every, every uh, procurement uh, professional has cost reduction in their DNA, uh, but I think we've become more progressive in the sense that we really want to find value that, that's beyond just price. Uh, we're looking for ways to make our deliveries from the suppliers more efficient. Uh, we're looking for quality because uh, the last thing you want to do is have a return uh, from your product or your service from the customer because uh, once they, they do something like that, uh, they normally don't come back for re repeat business. So high quality uh, you know, from the, the start of the overall value chain is something that's uh, you know, very important for us when we're, we're talking about dealing with suppliers. And I think something that's uh, gaining more traction uh, today, are, we're looking for partners that are very innovative. And innovation just isn't technology. It's really more about how they solve problems or address problems in, in different ways, you know, with different ideas, uh, different thoughts. And that's, that's very important today. And lastly, I, I think 
you know, procurement is, is uh, really the function that, that collaborates across all categories and all departments and with all stakeholders and, and figures out ways to uh, develop not only a short-term plan, but more importantly, long-term plans uh, that really help us to uh, have great relationships with all members of the value chain. So as I really expand upon uh, that definition and I think of procurement's role in, in today's business, we, we are a few things uh, and these are just uh, a few. I, I think that we can be many more. It really just depends on what the organization or what, what your team needs. But I think first and foremost, we are the, the trusted advisors and, and business partners of, of a company organization. And really what that means is it, we're looked upon to not only to provide guidance, but to also uh, influence uh, the strategies that uh, really are a part of a, a company's or organization's DNA. Yeah, how do they end up uh, improving uh, overall performance of a, an employee or a, a team member? Yeah, how do we, we go to market with a, <clears throat> with a new product uh, that will end up uh, providing great value for our, our customers? Or, you know, how do we avoid uh, any situation uh, such as a, a supplier failure or a supplier bankruptcy? So we have to be uh, really part of uh, that planning process. And we're looked upon as advisors and, and partners to, uh, again, influence uh, everything that goes on within a company today. And when I say that we're a process leader, in that regard, I feel that we are looked upon to actually, <clears throat> uh, I think, make processes more efficient. And uh, as we make those processes efficient, there's a lot of change that goes along with that. And in that, what we're trying to do is really make sure that everybody is uh, able and willing uh, to embrace that change. And I think most importantly, we're out there to, to seek value in whatever form that that comes. Uh, it could be a cost reduction. It could be, again, a, a higher quality supplier. Uh, whatever that value is, we have to go deliver it. And I think that's a, a big part of what our role is today. Um, when you look at you know, what makes up a, a good procurement professional and what are some of the attributes or, or characteristics, uh, I talked a little bit about strategic planning, you know, having a vision uh, that's not only for uh, today's business, but you know, what what tomorrow will bring. So what what can you do to uh, help define the, those strategies and, and plans and what you can do to, to implement them? Those are all good uh, characteristics of you know, somebody that, that's uh, you know, very forward thinking in, in procurement today. Uh, communication is very much a part of what we do and, and in fact being uh, influential in our communications is extremely key and we have to be able to to speak to all levels of the organization whether that's you know a frontline employee uh, working a, a customer service desk or it's the the CEO or, or chief operating officer we, we have to be able to uh, communicate everything that's going on uh, as we see them and is able we're able to make some type of uh, guidance recommendation that will uh, ultimately determine uh, the direction of, of which way that we go in the company. Uh, but I, I think one of the uh, most important traits or attributes that a procurement professional must have is, is empathy. Uh, I can't uh, recall not having something uh, like this uh, uh, within my skill set because it, it's just so important to, to put yourself in someone else's shoes. Uh, and, and think about what they're going through. And that's, I think that really comes along with change management. You certainly cannot uh, you know, hope to guide somebody through the change without first uh, you know, understanding you know, some of the challenges or maybe some of the problems that they're going through and, and think how you would solve them or, or how you would deal with them. And that, that certainly helps you to maybe uh, put forth a, a, a better foot and getting them to come along with uh, any plans or, or decisions that, that you, have to, you have to make. And yeah, I, I think one of my favorite, and one that I, I learn from my, my kids every day, because we, we watch a lot of cartoons here. One of our favorite is Curious George. And if you've ever seen this, or you have small kids in, in your house, 
uh, you know, Curious George is always asking a question. And in, in fact, it's it's part of the theme song that uh, you, you, your world is better if you're you're asking questions. And, and I think that's what a, a good procurement professional will do too is is always ask questions. You know, why why is this happening? Why why do we do this? And uh, you not only learn a lot about what what's going on with uh, your partners and your stakeholders and, and the business, but I think you could also have a lot of fun too. But I've I've always enjoyed uh, uh, the questions that my my kids pose, and I, I really start to think about uh, things in a different way because sometimes their their questions are the the most simple, uh, but they're actually in a, in a way quite profound. So I, I like that. Uh, I have a lot of fun with the, with the questions. Uh, but I, I really actually enjoy listening, and I think that also is a, is a great attribute of a <clears throat> of a procurement professional. Excuse me. And I think, you know, we can't go into these situations where we're trying to be a influential communicator or we're strategically planning, you know, the the next activities for uh, you know, the, for the upcoming year without listening and understanding, you know, what's most important to our customers and our internal team members and stakeholders. We, we can't go into these situations uh, saying that we know everything or we have all the answers. That, that would actually be, a, I think, a turnoff for most folks. So it, it's very good to uh, listen and we should always strive to improve our, our listening skills. Actually, I think this is very applicable to anything that we're doing uh, aside from procurement. So, you know, really, as as I look at this in a, in a whole, and I, I see procurement in today's supply chain, in today's business, I really think of procurement as a service. And, and you can see here, uh, we're really trying to deliver value in, in a couple of key areas, uh, but they can go beyond this. I, I think, as I mentioned, you've got quality and, and risk management that's uh, you know, a very strong topic today, one that procurement is, is really involved in and integrated in uh, for many companies and organizations. Uh, we look at ways that we can uh, influence delivery, not only by uh, receiving items and services on time, but making sure that uh, suppliers that we work with meet their commitments on time. Uh, certainly everything uh, that is uh, based upon uh, procurement uh, foundations and and uh, you know the traditional aspect of procurement is is based on cost and, and I think that's true but uh, in in many cases <clears throat> we we have to look for uh, ways to uh, see beyond that and I, I think that comes also in the the service innovation piece that we're we're trying to deliver value on too so. All in all, we have to develop plans that, that touch every one of our, our stakeholders and, and customers that are both internal and external. And in, in this diagram here, you can see that it's quite the, uh, the matrix, uh, if you will. But I, I think that it's good and that it shows that, you know, we really are much more uh, today uh, so than we were in the past uh, customer facing, uh, really business partners. Uh, we take a look at much more than just cost and we're really involved in the business from the, the front end all the way to the, the back end. And it's, it's really exciting. And I think this is the, the future of procurement. It, it will be uh, thought of as a service, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, you know, just a, a few short examples where I think uh, procurement has really uh, stepped to the forefront uh, Besides just uh, the traditional thought of reducing a cost or uh, negotiating a great deal, uh, when I worked, uh, I said I mentioned, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I mentioned uh, working with a, a grocery firm out west, and, and they were very mission driven. They were looking to not only uh, get uh, improved costs, but really that wasn't their their only their only value driver. Uh, so to speak. They were really looking to get involved in the community, uh, reduce their, their carbon footprint, uh, really get customers to uh, adopt a, a concept of more reuse so that you bring bags into the, the supermarket that could be reused rather than just uh, buying your, your goods and groceries and taking them away in a plastic bag. 
So we're looking for you know, suppliers that could help us in, in that regard. And what we found is that there, there weren't too many that uh, actually had, uh, I would say, the, the bandwidth or the, the wherewithal to actually uh, take on all these uh, different initiatives. So we actually had to, to teach them uh, in, in some regards, which was, was fine because that was actually part of the, uh, of the company's mission is that we, we want to be uh, involved in, in the community and, and whether that's the, the supply-based community or the local community, uh, we want to be pioneers and, and teachers. Uh, so that was very good. We, we still were able to uh, bring suppliers along and, and teach them some of the concepts, uh, yet we were uh, very open to ideas that suppliers had as well. So some of the ideas that the suppliers brought forth uh, were you know, customer training, so uh, they get uh, customers to understand how to uh, reuse uh, different size bags uh, rather than just uh, you know, maybe uh, paper bags all the time uh, that could be uh, just discarded. Uh, and really, we worked across all functions to uh, drive this mission home. We worked with finance, we worked with marketing, uh, and we work with operations. And one example in working with operations is that we, we, we found a way to reduce our deliveries. Uh, and that helped to uh, make sure that the, the trucks that were going out the door from the, the suppliers' warehouses, you know, that, that helped to reduce not only the, uh, the cost, but also helped to reduce the, the carbon footprint. And we also worked with operations to make sure that the, the labor was in place to receive all the all the right <clears throat> uh, goods at the right time uh, at the at the back dock. So this is one example of where really the <clears throat> uh, the company was looking for something more than than price or, or cost reduction. We we're looking for ways to uh, drive innovation, uh, focus on sustainability, fo focus on community involvement and looking for ways to do that, not only with suppliers, but uh, across the business. So uh, this is just one example, I think, that was, was pretty, pretty powerful for me because it, it showed that we could, we could work across all sorts of lines within the procurement function to, to bring about a, a positive result. If I talk about another example, um, when I worked with uh, the company that provided smart meters and, and software, Clara, we, we realized it's, it was a pretty competitive market. Uh, there are a lot of uh, different competitors, uh, all uh, you know, various attributes, uh, but again, very, very competitive. And one of the things that we were trying to do is really get uh, some newer products out to the market quicker, but we, we struggled to do that because we didn't have uh, all the right resources in terms of uh, labor and, and uh, engineering in place. And uh, one way that we were looking to solve that uh, was to work with our, our contingent uh, workforce. So we, we really developed a, a workforce management strategy. Again, it wasn't focused on cost reduction which is normally what's thought of a, a immediately when procurement becomes involved in, in one of these types of engagements. But we're really uh, focused in on how can we get the, the product uh, out to the customer faster so that they could receive value. So one of the things that we did is we looked at uh, the, the job descriptions that we had. We realized that we had uh, some 50 job descriptions for uh, the same software engineer. So we realized uh, that was causing a lot of confusion with our suppliers that were providing us the, the contingent labor workforce. So we, we narrowed that down significantly. We went from about 57 down to, uh, I think it was 20 uh, different job descriptions, uh, which was very good. It was very clear for the suppliers to, to understand and they could, uh, could provide us candidates that, that met those uh, job descriptions you know, very quickly. Uh, also, we realized that we were dealing with uh, well over 200 agencies uh, to provide these contingent workers, uh, and that was just too many to manage, uh, too many to, for us to, to sift through all the, the different candidates. So uh, we worked with a, a third-party provider to uh, ultimately streamline uh, that, and we went from actually 
uh, taking sometimes months to bring on a, a new contingent worker, you know, down to about two weeks, which was very good. Uh, so that really helped us to get the, the products uh, off of our, our deck and out to the marketplace uh, much quicker, much faster than, than before. And, and by the way, we, we actually did save uh, some money, but that wasn't the, the primary value driver of, uh, of the company. We, we did save over $2 million, but uh, again, that wasn't, that wasn't the reason for, for going out and, and doing this. And, and while we were working on shoring up the contingent labor uh, workforce, it did allow us to partner up with additional uh, suppliers in the, in the technology space that just enhanced our R&D uh, group. We got more uh, innovative ideas. Uh, we were very accepting of ideas uh, from, uh, from external partners to really just uh, give us some, some thoughts uh, that we hadn't had before. Uh, so it was really good. And this experience taught us that, that we can uh, really look again beyond price, uh, figure out ways to uh, get things done faster, more efficiently, and in the end, uh, generate more business. So it was really, uh, really very good. And it really, the last example I have uh, has to do with uh, risk management. When I worked at, at Hager Companies, uh, we were we we're discovering that uh, even after uh, dealing with suppliers for some some 30 years, uh, in, in the case of Hager, not all the suppliers understood, uh, you know, exactly what the the customers wanted, uh, including our our end customer. Uh, and in some cases, you know, we, we just didn't have a, a very good uh, connection with them, even after uh, just doing business with them for a long time. So what we, we decided to do uh, was to address this because not understanding the customer requirements was a, a big risk for us. So what we decided to do is, is really work together with quality, with product marketing, with sales and go to the suppliers and engage them head on. So we, we held our, our first ever uh, supplier conference. We, we talked about the expectations of really what we uh, want out of the supplier relationship and what we expected out of performance. Uh, we showed them what it, it looks like in terms of, of feedback that we would provide uh, via scorecard that we developed. And that was really important because th they were able to see you know, how much business they could, they could grow and how much business they could uh, uh, really uh, earn if they were to, to perform at, at our levels that, that we expected, which were pretty high. Uh, so after that, that uh, supply conference, it was really uh, interesting to see that we, we did get uh, quite a bit of uh, great improvements in terms of quality delivery, uh, cost and service. And it really uh, allowed us to uh, open the door for uh, really a, a greater connection with our suppliers. We ended up establishing a, a supplier quality uh, function uh, within Asia, within the region where our suppliers were. Uh, and that group's focus was to, to make the suppliers better. Again, because we, we thought that if the supplier is performing better, uh, our business will perform better, our customers will be happier. So we really uh, understood that uh, this lack of performance was a, was a risk and we, we needed to, to tackle that head on. And again, the, uh, the goal wasn't uh, cost reduction primarily, it was more supplier improvement and avoiding uh, disruption uh, that would ultimately uh, affect our, our business and our customers. So as I think about, uh, you know, really ways that we can get involved as procurement professionals, again, you know, ways that are uh, much more than, than just uh, getting a, a better deal or, or getting a better price or getting a better delivery. Uh, I can think of uh, the thing that's, that's near and dear to me is, is always engage and, and listen. And I think uh, you'll find the, the easiest way to engage your, your team members and stakeholders is to, to bring food, I, I found, or, or drink. Uh, if you invite them to uh, events outside of work, uh, I always had uh, a great number of people willing to, to come and, and meet me for a drink. Uh, and uh, that's, that's always good to, to get people in, involved. And, and you just listen. 
I can think back of a time uh, at, a, at Clara again when uh, we we discovered a, a lot of ways to improve the business uh, just by uh, opening up a, a venting session, if you will. So so people came uh, to to my office to the conference room where I held the meeting, and they just talked about their problems and their issues, and you know we developed solutions around that. So that that's the the first way to get involved is just to to engage your team members and, and listen to what they have to say. And, uh, you know, people always uh, say to me, you're, you're so optimistic, you're, you're so positive. Well, I, I'm always one to try. I mean, it, it, the worst thing that, that can happen is, is uh, I, maybe I will not get 100% of, of what I'm shooting for, but, you know, maybe I'll get 70% or maybe I'll get 80%. I'm always willing to try, and I, I think that's the that's the best attitude to have, uh, as well as being uh, you know, positive and, and optimistic, is you should always try. It, you will not get anything if, if you don't try, and, and that's uh, you know, something that I always uh, definitely give a, as advice and, and recommendation for, for anybody that, I, that I'm talking to. And I, I think, uh, lastly, and for me, uh, the, the most fun is I enjoy meeting people, uh, networking, uh, you know, seeing what it can, help them. And uh, I believe in, in certainly sharing ideas and, and what works and what doesn't work. Uh, one of the ways that you can do that now is to uh, join the, a group that I'm in, involved in is called the Procurement Foundry. So you can check it out online, procurementfoundry.com. And uh, you'll find that it's really a, an engaging community of all uh, procurement and supply chain professionals, you know, talking about uh, issues of the day, you know, uh, how to solve them, maybe suppliers that are, are presenting a problem, how to overcome those challenges, and really uh, just sharing ideas and, and bouncing things off one another, which is always cool, always fun. Um, and I think another great uh, avenue uh, for networking and, and best practice sharing is your, your local Institute of Supply Management chapter. Uh, that group certainly has uh, yeah, done wonderful things in, in the community, uh, yeah, as well as the, advancing the overall procurement function, which is, which is great. So uh, really that, that sums up what I, I think of procurement and, and I hope that you, you realize that maybe we're, we're not just uh, in, in the back office anymore. Uh, we're not just the, the lowly members of the supply chain. We're an integral, integral part of the supply chain. And uh, with that, I'd, I'd certainly uh, be open to any of your questions that you have. Great. Thanks so much, Jonathan. And to our audience, it's about 3.37 Eastern time. We're going to take the next 10, maybe 15 minutes to um, pose your questions to Jonathan as well as your observations. And we've got a couple already that are submitted, Jonathan. So I uh, hope your seatbelt is fastened in. Um, so the first comment, uh, Jonathan, comes from Sandra. And Sandra basically uh, was agreeing with an earlier portion of your presentation. She says that nowadays an accurate and appropriate selection of suppliers, whether you're talking about raw materials, equipment suppliers, or even logistics partners, uh, all of those are critical to your winning strategy. And then she goes on to say about how important that alignment of your suppliers, the, the information sharing, and proactive, uh, a proactive customer-centric approach is also really important. So feel free to, uh, Jonathan, how does that sit with you? And, and please comment. I, I think that's exactly right. Thank you, Sandra, for that. Uh, I, I believe that in today's procurement world, today's supply chain world, you really have to uh, uh, have those those partners that are aligned with your your strategy, your your mission, your your values, and your goals. If they aren't, uh, you'll start to develop uh, some issues, and maybe uh, you'll you'll waste a lot of time. But alignment is key, and I, I think to even expand upon that further, um, our supply chain function today is really working to take all of all of that uh, alignment, if you will, all of those requirements uh, that we have 
and taking them out to our customers. Whereas maybe you know, 15 years ago, we were sitting in the back office, never allowed to uh, deal or, or see any, any customers. But now we're, we're taking the, those selected suppliers, those uh, aligned partners, and taking them out to the customers and, and solving problems and, and adding value together. So I think that's very important. Absolutely. Thank you, Sandra, for your commentary. Okay, next question is going to come from Steve. Uh, Steve, how you doing? Good to see you. Uh, Steve asks, how do you evaluate your supplier's financial strength? Um, well, that's an interesting question. Uh, I work with a variety of uh, suppliers that are public. You know, some are some are private. Some large. Some small. Um, I think if you can get some level of transparency uh, from the suppliers, and they won't always give this to you, but I think the ones that are, are more willing to share the information with you are the ones that you will want to align with. Uh, but I, I often start with uh, talking to the, the highest finance pro professional they have uh, within the company and just just talk about what the overall health of, of the company is, you know, what are their uh, trends looking like for, for sales, uh, you know, for, uh, for human capital, uh, all those, those different metrics. Uh, I will just try to, to ask straightforward questions. And there's certainly a lot of uh, third party or external uh, reporting uh, institutions that you can uh, get information from, Dun & Bradstreet, uh, Hoover's, uh, all those. Uh, but I, I just found that if the supplier is willing and they're they're able to be transparent, just having the the conversations and the information sharing with them directly has worked best for me. Mm, fantastic. And Steve, thanks for the question. Thanks for weighing in on that, Jonathan. Next question that comes from Ramon, and Ramon asks: In the industries you've worked in. Which one has been the most receptive to working with procurement as a business partner? Well, it's uh, also an interesting question. Uh, uh, thanks, Ramon. I, I, I feel that uh, you know, it really depends on the maturity level of uh, their supply chain organization. Um, when I worked in uh, the manufacturing sector at Ing Ingersoll Rand, they had been going through a supply chain transformation for for many years. Uh, so they were receptive already uh, and actually pioneering. Uh, so it really it just depends on, again, the, the maturity level of the organization. Some will be very receptive, uh, but I think it also depends on what types of value uh, that they're looking for. If, if they're just looking for, for cost, I think they're they're pretty uh, open to getting our ideas on on how to improve that cost. Uh, if they're looking for ways to maybe engage a supplier differently, uh, certainly uh, procurement professional today uh, can provide guidance on that. So again, I think it depends on really two things: the maturity level of the, the organization and the, the supply chain function, or uh, you know really what what value drivers are important to that organization. Great, great question, Ramon. Uh, next question comes from Ika. Ika, how you doing? Good to see you. Um, with your passion, Jonathan, about technology, can you share your insight on how technology impacts procurement? And I've got a follow-up question, which I'll hold to that. Hold on that for now. Uh, it's it's everywhere. It's, it's everything that we touch and everything that we do. Uh, Ika, thank you for that. Now, one of the examples that I can share, I mean, goes back even uh, to 2005 when I was e-sourcing manager and working on delivering uh, reverse auction solutions and, and supplier feedback solutions to, to my company. So we were using, you know, something that was, you know, web-based uh, and it was kind of a clunky interface, but again, this was 2005, so a long time ago. Uh, but today, I mean, really, the, the technology has helped us uh, to not only evaluate suppliers, uh, communicate with suppliers in terms of our, our needs, uh, requirements, 
uh, but it's even helped us to get closer to the customers. And I, I really like that aspect of it because sometimes uh, the, the customers uh, aren't always uh, clear uh, in, in what they're, they're telling us. So uh, the technology helps to bring some of that out you know, through, through surveys, uh, other questionnaires, things like that. But I, I'm just really excited about all the tools that are available to me uh, to get the information I need to make better decisions uh, to have better partnerships. So really uh, the, the technology and the tools are what's exciting and, and fun for me. Fantastic. Great question. And Ika has got a follow up question, which you kind of touch on a little bit, but what are the ways do you see technology changing businesses procurement behavior, Jonathan? Well, I, I think it, it can really help uh, as, I'm, as I'm thinking about that. If, if I want to do business with maybe um, you know, a smaller set of, of companies where maybe they have <clears throat> you know, smaller revenue or they're, they're women owned or uh, minority owned, uh, those different characteristics, you know, the, the tools that are out there today uh, can bring that information to me uh, quicker and much easier than in years past where I would have to dig around and, and make a lot of phone calls right right now with some of these these tools that are available I can I can just basically get a report uh, or see it on my dashboard so I, I like that it, it it opens up the door for more supplier relationships that maybe I wouldn't have considered or found it difficult to engage with those suppliers before so I like that the technology and the tools can can give me those opportunities that maybe I didn't have before. Great, great questions, Ika. Um, quick comment from Lissette and Jonathan. Uh, Lissette thanks you for your presentation and comments. A lot of valuable information in different key areas of procurement, and she's looking forward to the next one. So thanks for that, Lissette. Um, one last question here I want to get you to weigh in on, and this comes from Avery, Jonathan. Where can procurement provide the most value for an organization? Hmm. Well, I think value comes from uh, a lot of different sources. It can, can take a lot of different shapes and forms. Like I mentioned before uh, in some of the examples uh, in working to develop a, a workforce management strategy, the company really wasn't looking for a cost reduction. They're looking for ways to get people on board so we could finish up products uh, quicker and get them out to our, our customers faster. Uh, so we were right in the middle of that. We were helping to said, go in and streamline the job descriptions, streamline the tool that we could uh, send out those requirements to our uh, suppliers. So there are a variety of ways that we can deliver value, but I think it starts from understanding what our stakeholders value the most. It may not always be a cost reduction. It could be a, a faster delivery. It could be a better performing supplier. It could be a more innovative supplier. We just have to listen and understand what those value drivers are from each of our stakeholders. All right. And, and, and so I said that was last question, but Jonathan, I'm going to sneak one more in. This is a good follow-up question from Steve. And Steve starts by saying, if forecasts are always wrong, and I would argue that forecasts aren't <laughs> always wrong. Sometimes they're really, really, really wrong. But uh, <laughs> Steve says, if forecasts are always wrong, how do you deal with the volatility of demand? Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's sort of an area that a little bit outside of my expertise, but you know, I, I have been on the receiving end uh, where the customer is saying, "Hey, I don't have my stuff," and then I go back to you know, some of my other uh, teammates and say, "Hey, what happened?" And it's exactly what 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 Steve described and what what you described, where the forecast was really off. Uh, then I I just have to work with the supplier and understand what they can do to help me. Uh, you know, get back up to speed, and some some may call it begging. I I'd like to call it uh, you know interacting and, and more uh, more dialogue and discussion. Uh, so I, I think when we have that issue where maybe we don't have enough uh, you know material or to satisfy the demand of the customer, I, I always engage with the supplier and ask you know first 
what can we do to, to get up to speed? And, and second, what can we do to prevent this from happening again, even though we know that uh, the forecasts aren't always correct? So, you know, work to, to make uh, the process more uh, proactive in the long run, but uh, short term, you know, figure out what I can do to, to bridge that gap. Mm, fantastic. And one more quick uh, comment as we, as we wrap up Q&A here. Uh, Sandra, Sandra says she's dealing with an inaccurate forecast as we speak, so she's enjoying the exchange. Uh, but she also, in an earlier comment, uh, Jonathan, she, Sandra also mentioned that she loves the scorecard approach. And in her experience, she's really enjoyed some, some healthy competition between suppliers yeah. uh, and, and, and the award grants. Um, and if they're really going the extra mile, Sandra says, uh, it'll, it'll show it and it'll be illustrated in that scorecard approach. So, uh, and then one last comment, she says it inspires others to get to that level of collaboration. And if you're not measuring it, you know, what's not measured uh, isn't improved upon, basically. That's right. I, I, I like the the whole competitive aspect when, when you have the scorecards and when you have conferences and you're getting yeah, different bids and different ideas. That that's awesome. I I love that stuff. Uh, people that engage with procurement, they they love it too. It's exciting, but uh, certainly you have to have a process. You have to have a um, a team dedicated to uh, managing all that. But the the outcome is is certainly worth it. And I think it's something that uh, all organizations should strive for is uh, having more competition with the supply base. You, you, you get better, better results, better outcome. Absolutely. So big thanks to all of our Q&A participants. You know, the Q&A portion of the, our webinars is, is certainly one of my favorite. I love the interaction we get from our audience. And Jonathan, thanks for, thanks for um, being willing to, to take all those questions as they come. So thanks so much. Um, really appreciate your time and perspective today. So we're going to be concluding our yeah. session this afternoon on just a few final items. Uh, first off, we're pleased, uh, Supply Chain Now Radio is pleased to be serving as a media partner for the upcoming 2019 Supply Chain and Quality Conference. And it's uh, an event that's being co-presented by the AIAG, which is the Automotive Industry Action Group, and the SCAC, which stands, you know, we, we love our acronyms in supply chain. Uh, that latter one stands for the South Carolina Automotive Council. So on September 12th and 13th, they're going to be hosting a great two-day conference, all focused on, as you might guess it, um, the world of automotive. Uh, and we're going to be broadcasting live from the event sponsored by our friends at the Effective Syndicate. So to learn more, you can check on, uh, click on the hyperlink that will be part of the deck. Or, of course, you can shoot us a note and we'll be happy to make the connection for you. Uh, and then finally, uh, upcoming, we've got web webinars with Chuck Baker on July 23rd. You're not going to want to miss, miss this presentation from Chuck where he's talking all about leadership. Chuck Baker is a longtime uh, ASCM slash APICS volunteer leader, uh, a West Point graduate and uh, an Army veteran, and he's got a, a great approach, practical approach, all about leadership. You can uh, sign up for that on July 23rd, and you can find that at supplychainradio.com. Uh, SupplyChainRadio.com. Uh, also, this Friday, we are continuing our Today in Manufacturing podcast series in conjunction with the Georgia Manufacturing Alliance, and we're going to be broadcasting live from Fastenal's Distribution Center in West Atlanta. Uh, and if you haven't found out about the Fastenal story, uh, you're going to want to tune in because that they were they were delivering on Amazon service levels before Amazon was around. So great story. Tune in for that. We're uh, really fortunate to present that today in manufacturing series in partnership with the GMA. And you can learn more. We've got a great landing page that's set up just for that series, todayinmanufacturing.com. Of course, you can check out our website for upcoming webinars, podcasts, and other events, uh, supplychainradio.com. And if there's anything we can do to serve as a resource for you, feel free to shoot us a note to Scott with two T's at supplychainradio.com, and we will do what we can to, to make life easier for you. Hey, Jonathan, before we conclude today's session, any final thoughts on your end? Yeah, I, I think uh, I just want to remind everybody, that, again, to really think about ways you can get involved and yeah, help to not only elevate procurement within the, the supply chain, but also 
uh, create value within your, your company organization. So uh, always keep that in mind. And uh, secondly, I would say uh, always try. You, you, know, you never know what you'll get if, if you don't at least try. So uh, I would leave you all with, with those two last thoughts. Thank you very much. And Jonathan, I, I liked how you prefaced your whole presentation along those lines on the front end, especially with uh, you know, encouraging folks to kind of get out of their comfort zone and experience new things. I think that's that's really important. So as we wrap up today, we'd like to uh, give a big thanks to Jonathan Townsley for joining us and sharing his very, I thought, very practical perspective today, which I always appreciate. A big special thanks to our sponsors, Apex Atlanta and Talent Stream. Of course, a big thank you to our audience for participating. What a great lively Q&A session today. On behalf of Supply Chain Now Radio, this is Scott Luton concluding today's episode, but we hope to reconnect with you again real soon. So have a great week, everybody. Thank you.